Hello there, everybody, and welcome. Soulstone Survivors got a big new fat update until it didn't anymore because it got reverted. So what has happened there? Why did the developers revert their update and is the game still on track? I personally care about this game a lot. I love it. It's for me personally the uh, the real sequel to Vampire Survivors because it has a lot more complexity. It has lovely ARPG vibes and I'm mad in love with this one, so I I really care about this update. So in this video I'm going to talk about what's in the update, what's bad about the update, what I personally think is really good about it, why I think it's a really, really smart move of the devs to revert it and rework it, and a little bit of a summary and a couple of ideas and hopes what will be going on about it. So let's get started with the bad things, because I want to get these out of the way, and probably you are most interested about the bad things anyways, aren't we humans interested in the bad things always first? So what's in the box? Runes got reworked massively, but reworked in a way that they got nerfed, pretty much all of them. The effect of all the runes got lowered by 33 to 66%. Yes, that's a big minus. Basically all of these that you knew are now in shambles. They still do what they did before, but uh, yeah, much less of it. So this is in itself not a bad thing. Maybe runes were too strong, I don't know, but uh, there's almost no winner in terms of runes in this uh, update. This on its own wouldn't be that much of a big deal, but there's also a big change in the way that we level up now. We level up slower, and the enemies, they grow more resilient. So this ends up with less damage on a rune board, more damage, on the, uh, more damage soaking capabilities on the enemies and less levels on us, which results in just longer games that uh, are more bullet spongy, so I get it why people didn't like that too much. The skill tree altogether got reworked a lot as well. I didn't really fathom the changes in, in their details. The only thing that I did read out of it was that uh, a lot of effects got here again lowered. I mean, at the end of the day, you can still grind out insane amounts of stats out of this uh, rune board for pretty much all of the character classes, but yeah, here again, a little bit of a lowering of, uh, of quality, but I must say, I didn't study the numbers here too hard, so. But here we have so many parts at once that make the game harder on one end and make us weaker at the other end, which is, uh, yeah, people don't like that. I get it. <laughs> that is uh, very, very relatable. The other problem there is, is that the game now, it's a lot of relearning. You know, if you're new to the game, this new update wouldn't have been any issue at all for you. But uh, for veterans, this uh, save file here is from 2022, so... <laughs> Well, you know, all of the skills now have new things that they do on top of what they did before. We now gain stackable buffs whenever we activate skills. That's on itself a really cool thing, but the sheer number of things that has changed is insane. I want to go over the skill changes a little bit more in detail on the part of the video where I talk about the good things, because the skill changes, as a matter of fact, are really cool, but boy, it's so much. It's really a lot, and I personally consider myself a data sponge. So, yeah, lots of relearning. People don't like that either. And now let's go to the really horrible parts, the curses rework, and the game pacing changes. So, they changed the lords to spawn one by one. So, you see, every difficulty level you add in a number another lord on top of that and in the previous versions all of these dudes they spawned all at once and uh, there was a unholy mess of skill effects all over the board and you were fighting at the end four people at once this is no longer a thing they spawn then you fight one then you fight the next then you fight the next then you fight the next then you get to regrind the enemies, then they spawn four enemies, then you can fight the next, and the next, and the next, and the next, and it's annoying. This is really a horrible change. And to add insult to injury, at the end of our journey, we gain this Council of Lords curse, which reverts this miserable situation back to its original state, and everybody can now spawn back. But you have to torture yourself 
through the entire road before you get to this point, and that is just, no, don't do that to us. That is just ungodly. A few people were really pissed with the pillars as well, but uh, these are optional curses. You don't need to add them into your game to progress, but seriously, pillars of protection, they are unfun. They lower the enemy's damage they take, and I tried it. If you derp them, because I just activated them when I started the game for the first time, you know, at some point you do no damage at all anymore to the enemy, and that is just, I don't know. I didn't like these pillars in the first place too much, and with that one, it's a minor nitpick. You can deactivate it, but whatever. These changes, the slower game pacing, the harder, tougher enemies, the one-by-one -one spawning lords, all led to one thing. The average game lasts longer than ever before, and I get it that people don't like it, because we like fast-paced games in this genre, and Soulstone Survivors did deliver really well on that end. These changes make the game much more slow-paced and strategical and tactical, and in all honesty, I didn't dislike it too much to face the bosses one by one, but at the same time, it just takes too long. 20 bosses like that is just... No, I, I didn't enjoy my time on that. No, it just... Uh, well, that is pretty much all of the bad things. Now let's move on to the good things. So, the skill overhaul is fun. Yes, it's a lot of relearning, but it is really, really cool. So, character classes get streamlined. Now we have only access to five different attributes per character class. This makes builds narrower. You might consider this a bad thing, but I personally consider it giving them more identity. I personally didn't see that as a really, really bad thing. On top of that now, like I already skimmed in the bad parts section, every skill when it's activated now gives us some sort of, many skills give us some, some sort of buff. Some of those skills even give us some new thing, like here, Electrified. Whenever we have now 20 stacks of Electrified, we have a barrage of uh, electricity thingies that uh, go uh, out uh, from us. So there is a effect for many different uh, spell schools, Light Magic does a AOE, point blank AoE healing burst, and uh, Arcane stuff does a, uh, does a massive uh, lightning bolt uh, kind of thing. There's a lot of things that you can now stack together. The real, real cool part about that is that you now can gain a lot of new stats out of your skills. And that is also a reason why a lot of things had to be nerfed, because you now gain a lot of stats out of your new skill, uh, out of your skills that you never gained before. But it is hard to perceive that in the bigger picture, and the game has become harder. That is something that I can't uh, sugarcoat. But altogether, new skill overhaul effects. I enjoyed it because this way you can uh, start focusing down on other effects. Skills have new qualities. Skills have new things that they do. And it is always a fun thing to see what, uh, what you can do with that. So, also the... There is a, a plenitude of new upgrade effects that we can now go into, and these are really, really cool. So we have now a lot of things that interact with one school to another. That means there are skills now that allow you to trigger your lightning skills whenever a fire skill is triggered. Those are skill chains. We have skills that make us stronger when we hit enemies from afar or from near, or fire skills empower all of your lightning skills. There's a lot of uh, d interaction that gives you new ideas and things to mix and match, which is really, really a lot of fun to play around with. So altogether, these many new tools and many new things that we got, I mean, there are also a lot of new skills added into the game. There's uh, so much new stuff happening there that that is the point that I really, really enjoy about this, uh, and I still play on the new update with a new account because I really indulge into this a lot. So let's move into the summary of this video. So 
First of all, the new stuff is really, really cool. I like it. There is nothing bad about it. A lot of quality of life things that I didn't mention here are also happening, but uh, altogether, the new skills are fun, the new overhauls are fun, and I, I really enjoy experimenting around like I did when I started out the game the first time. This is amazing! This is exactly what a new beginning sounds like, but uh, the downside of this is pretty clearly it is just too many things at once. They tried to achieve too many, too many, too many things at the same time. And it was clear that some shots have to be misfired. And the worst offender altogether in this update is that we have faced a lot of nerfs on ourselves while the enemies got buffed. And that is uh, a pretty heavy scissor effect, which uh, makes the whole gameplay experience slower, less smooth, and I personally do understand why people didn't like that. This is, um, I personally like gaming challenge, but I don't like bullet sponges, and the game feels much more bullet spongy than before due to these changes. The slower progression on our end and the faster enemy progression just do their thing, and this feels like a, uh, like a nightmare that you can only grind yourself out of by, by learning all these extra damage increasers for your character classes. That is maybe a intended interaction, but at the same time it just feels bad. I don't know. There must be a better way to implement that. At least give us, uh, give us, give us better level scaling back, pretty please. I think this is, to, to me personally, the the really, really uh, worst, uh, worst offender. And last point on my list: please don't slow the gameplay down like like you do with the. Uh, with the Lord spawns. My idea that I had while I was uh, experimenting around, it would have been awesome if all those purple optional um, curses would be unlocked way earlier, like make them available always optional, but most importantly, give us the ability to spawn all bosses at once. Most people love that uh, fiesta and it is, uh, it, it is, it, I personally think the game just takes too long because either you nuke down the boss in an ungodly time and then you're just asking yourself why the hell do I have to bur bur burst them down one by one or you have to fight them really because your build sucks or, or you just hadn't had the luck of the draw and then you cannot even use your AoE skills to hurt them all at once because you have to hurt them. One by one by one. That is just no fun. And that is pretty much all the things that I have to summarize about it. I love what they did there. I love the new changes. I love the new breath of fresh air. But I think most importantly, we need to get back some player power. And then things should be pretty okay. Because the uh, majority of the streamlining is awesome. The, 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 I like that there is less clutter now with the merging of many skill effects like bleed and hemorrhage got merged. Many people didn't like it, but I personally like less effects and better defined effects. And uh, mind you that all of these merges, they, they made them have both effects. So bleeding has now the effects of hemorrhage and bleeding at the same time. Poison has the same stats as Rot and uh, Poison at the same time, and uh, wherever things got fused, they now have both stats at once. I mean, at the end of the day, we can now stack less damage over time effects together, but, well, it also makes for a more streamlined uh, gameplay experience, and I personally like that. The last thing that I always like to criticize about this game is still that mobility is way too much of a game changer, and I hate it to be dependent on the luck of the draw. So many high-end runs are depending on your move speed and the amount of dashes that you have available. And therefore, seriously, I would love a more reliable situation where I'm not needing to draft boring agility nodes and, you know, something like a linear movement speed scaling. I don't know. There have to be solutions. What I personally just dislike is that so many good runs can be just kneecapped by not enough mobility on the draft. And that is still an issue, has always been an issue, and I really hope it, 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 it will get fixed at some point. 
Well, what's left to say? Well, I really hope that the the devs get that uh, update under control and uh, get it back to a fun state where, where we are allowed to be overpowered again, because that's basically why people hated it, mostly. I think also it has been a really wise move of the devs to just whip it back, give us the chance to still play it. But uh, I also feel like some of the reactions were over the top. I personally think that this update is a really, really good step into the right direction. I really, really like what has happened here. I also think it is a good thing when the game is more challenging, but some of the ideas just didn't uh, pop too well. I love the new build things that we can do. I love the new build variety, especially skill chains. Seriously, skill chains are, are amazing. And uh, yeah, I hope this uh, this goes into the right direction and I hope you guys enjoyed this piece of information. Let me know what you think about this update. Let me know what you, uh, if you play it. I personally am now playing a new account and uh, trying out how good or bad it is. And uh, let me know what you think. Leave me a thumbs up if you considered this a enjoyable piece of video and consider subscribing. Also description box down below full of good links. Discord, Twitch, and also support links. Patreon, Paypal, buy me a copy, YouTube channel membership, you name them. Big, big thanks to everybody who is supporting Icon Gaming. I deeply appreciate you folks. And a big, big thanks to everybody watching this video still at this very point. And I hope you had a good time. So, see you on the next one, and bye-bye.